Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions. And today we are going to discuss the fifth part of the veneer series where we're going over the fundamentals of veneers on a typodont for the most part. And in this particular section, we're going to be discussing what I like to call the super veneer. People have used words like crown ear before for this. Super veneers are really indicated when you have less enamel and when your lingual tooth structure might be involved. It's really a good idea to consider super veneers when you have more than two millimeters of unsupported ceramic. The margins may be indented as long as we compensate for that with more traditional retention and resistance form. And the stump shade can be two shades off. It can be a little bit more, but sometimes we ought to consider going to an all ceramic crown in that case. And finally, the material of choice would be lithium disilicate that we can cut back and layer with feldspathic to improve the aesthetics if necessary. And this has got to be adhesively delivered. It has to be bonded to the tooth structure. So feldspathic material is incredible. It's beautiful, translucent. The technicians are able to build up intrinsic color, but it's potentially weak. And that's why we want to go to lithium desilicate with our super veneers. I mentioned stump shade, and I just wanted to point out that this is called the Natural Dye Material Shade Guide by Ivoclar. It is an awesome shade guide. You can pick up one of these for really cheap, and they're indispensable for determining the shade of the tooth after prepping. The veneer type indications that we've discussed so far are facial, when basically shape changes, minor shape changes, and maybe no need to lengthen the tooth are indicated. But if you want to lengthen the tooth, we ought to consider going to an incisal butt veneer in order to get a much better lingual contour. When we need to have the requirements of the incisal butt, but we have a diastema or we have defective restorations that extend onto the lingual, we'll consider the lingual wrap. And then super veneers, all of the above, and you can even have some margins on dentin, and you need to support the porcelain over two millimeters. The veneer kit that we've discussed is going to be utilized today as well, and I'm also going to utilize the uh, KS0F burr from this add-on suggested kit here. So let's get started. We're going to work on this lateral incisor, which I've made a few defects in. I've got a wear facet on the incisal that's exposing dentin. I have an existing, very poorly done class 3 composite on the mesial, and we have a class 5 restoration on the facial and so we're going to go ahead and prepare this for the super veneer starting with 1.5 to 2 millimeters of incisal reduction. In super veneers it may be more than 1.5 to 2 millimeters and that's not a problem because the Emax can be cut back and layered to look beautiful. If Emax is 3-4 millimeters beyond the incisal edge, not a problem. It's made for that. So we're going to not worry so much about the material strength in this case, we're going to worry more about getting the tooth uh, prepared nicely with adequate space for the Emacs to be used. So let's continue with the prep. <gasps> so you can see how I'm using the burr here to go up the vertical walls and I'm trying to get the finish line to follow the gingival architecture. I'm reducing off the facial. Some may ask, well, why didn't I use depth cuts in this case? And I usually would use depth cuts, but I thought I'd show you how we can utilize the stent without depth cuts to make some adjustments to our reduction. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And you can see that I've been working away at this facial but the reduction is completely off. If you look at the distal, it's, it's significantly under-reduced, and so is the mesial for that matter. So we're going to have to spend more time reducing the facial, but the prep guide is an awesome way to do this in the event that you did not do depth cuts or you chose not to do depth cuts. Look at that class 3 composite there. That's going to be included in the outline form of this particular preparation. I'm going to break through the interproximal with the 
you can look at that class free composite it popped out while we were prepping and we're going to want to extend the outline form to include that class free composite and wrap over the lingual significantly in order to get more retention form. It's amazing how easy it is to use this interproximal burr without hitting the adjacent tooth because it just slips right in there quite easily. You can use this also for full crown preparations. Now we switched over to the LVS3016. The tip of this burr is going to be utilized to form the modified shoulder or the rounded internal shoulder. We want the angle between the shoulder and the unprepared tooth to be approximately 90 degrees but the internal angle should be rounded. And we're just using the same burr here to extend beyond the margins of the previous class 3 restoration. We're then going to go across the lingual to create a very robust, tall lingual shelf to hang on to. This vertical wall should be about 1.5 to 2 millimeters and it's going to provide us with significant amount of resistance form for this Emax veneer. Remember, super veneers are indicated when you have less enamel, when you have the margins on the facial that are on the root surface, and we need to have more retention through conventional means in order to hold this in place. It's a little bit like a reverse three-quarter crown, all ceramic, isn't it? You could also use the football shaped diamonds that I have in the burr kit for this same purpose. Well, it's always a time uh, when the preparation looks kind of ugly, where you've made mistakes and now it's time to correct them, like those line angles on the mesial and distal. After making some corrections, we can recheck the reduction and see that we've accomplished an adequate amount of clearance for the most part, just needs a little bit more reduction on that distal area. I want to draw your attention to this distal shelf that I've created on the vertical wall right there. That is there so that I can grab onto more tooth structure. I placed it on the distal because the composite on the mesial side would presumably be undermining the tooth structure if I tried to wrap it around on the mesial side, but I guess you could do that as well. So once again, look for me in sizal view and see if you need to make some improvements. We're going to use the KS0F which is a round-ended, non-tapered, it's parallel, 30 micron grit diamond, and we're going to go ahead and use that to smooth the walls. This is a wonderful burr. The burr works very easily in scallop tissue areas. You can use the burr to round off the corners, remove undercuts, and generally just make the preparation smoother and nicer. And you know my requirement to have all the finish lines very crisp and very well defined. So we're doing pretty well. Let's look at it from the facial, and we look at that undercut from that class 5 and that class 3 that fell out. Well, what are we going to do about that? Well, that's pretty easy actually because we're just going to block it out with some flowable composite. So we protect the adjacent tooth with some of the gas line tape that I showed you in my class 4 video. And we're going to utilize our primer and adhesive and then place the flowable of a matching shade to the stump shade. I suppose you could also use a hybrid composite. We're using this low speed now to do our final refinement.
I like to use the burr dry when I'm doing this final refinement step. From the facial, it pretty much looks like an all ceramic crown, doesn't it? But from the incisal view, it's a very different story. If we look at the RGS3, which is one millimeter wide, we know that our finish line is much less than that. It's a lot closer to 0 0.5, 0 0.6 millimeters. We preserved a lot of enamel on that lingual. Now, as always, we're going to utilize our finishing sequence utilizing the OptiDiscs, rounding off corners, smoothing the surface. All of these things are done so that the veneer laboratory procedures will be facilitated. I think the preparation is pretty much finished. Let's take a look. Should have no undercuts, should be smooth with continuous finish line all the way around, and the finish line should be close to a butt joint. We can check our facial reduction. Plenty of room for the material and even cutting it back in that incisal area for the addition of feldspathic material. When you start looking at teeth critically, you'll see that oftentimes you don't need to do a full crown and you can do something more conservative, like a super veneer. So I hope you enjoyed this short fifth segment of the fundamentals of veneer. And I would invite you to stay tuned because we are going to have a final video on provisionalization. I think that should be really interesting. So thanks for watching and take care.